ever pondered over the fact that a drug, opium, could lead to not one but two wars? Today we dive into the history of the Opium Wars. These conflicts involving the mighty British Empire and the Qing Dynasty of China were rooted in an unassuming yet potent substance, opium. This narcotic played a pivotal role, shaping the course of events and leaving an indelible mark on the world. So, buckle up history buffs as we delve into the past. Stay tuned as we unravel the events of the Opium Wars. The origins of the Opium Wars trace back to the imbalance of trade between Britain and China. In the late 18th century, Britain was buying more from China than it was selling, leading to a significant trade deficit. The Chinese, with their vast empire, had little need for British goods, preferring to trade in silver. Britain on the other hand was thirsty for Chinese tea, silk and porcelain, but had little to offer in return that the Chinese wanted. This imbalance of trade was a thorn in the side of the British economy. The solution they found was as ingenious as it was morally questionable. Opium. Grown in abundance in the British colonies in India, opium became the silver bullet for Britain's trade woes. It was illegally shipped to China, where it quickly became popular for both medicinal and recreational use. The trade of this addictive drug soon reversed the trade imbalance, with silver flowing back into British coffers. But, as opium use spread like wildfire across China, a serious addiction problem emerged. The social and economic consequences were severe. Opium dens sprang up in every city, productivity plummeted and families were destroyed. The Chinese government, alarmed by the escalating crisis, made multiple attempts to ban the opium trade. However, their efforts were met with resistance from the British, who were enjoying the profits of the opium trade. The Chinese crackdown on opium ignited tensions between the two nations. Britain, under the guise of protecting its citizens and their right to trade, refused to halt the opium shipments. This refusal was not taken lightly by the Chinese authorities. The Chinese emperor ordered the destruction of opium stocks in Canton, a major trading port in 1839. This act was seen by the British as a direct affront and a violation of what they saw as their right to trade. The stage was set for a confrontation, a conflict sparked by a drug. What followed was a series of wars that would drastically alter the course of history, not just for Britain and China, but for the world. The Opium Wars were about to begin. The year 1839 marked the beginning of a conflict that would redefine the relationship between the East and the West. This was the year when the First Opium War erupted, a war that was triggered by a bitter trade dispute between the British Empire and the Qing Dynasty of China. The year before, in 1838, the Chinese government had made a decisive move to curb opium addiction among its populace. Chinese officials, led by the determined commissioner Lin Zexu, seized and destroyed over a thousand tons of opium from British merchants in the coastal city of Canton, now known as Guangzhou. This act, known as the Canton System, sparked outrage in Britain, leading to demands for retaliation. The British response was swift and brutal. In the summer of 1840, a formidable fleet of Royal Navy warships launched a series of attacks on Chinese coastal cities. The Chinese were ill-prepared for the onslaught, their outdated naval technology no match for the British firepower. The naval battles of the First Opium War were largely one-sided, with the British forces scoring victory after victory. In 1842, the war concluded with the signing of the Treaty of Nanking, the first of what the Chinese would later call the Unequal Treaties. This agreement forced China to cede the island of Hong Kong to Britain and open up five of its ports to foreign trade. The British also received a hefty indemnity, and the Chinese government was prohibited from imposing tariffs on British goods. The Treaty of Nanking marked a significant turning point in East-West relations. It signaled the start of what the Chinese refer to as the Century of Humiliation, a period during which Western powers exerted significant influence and control over China. The First Opium War ended, but the seeds of further conflict were sown. This was just the beginning of a tumultuous era that would see the balance of power shift dramatically, and the world order as we know it today begin to take shape. Just over a decade later, tensions flared up again leading to the Second Opium War. A seemingly minor incident in 1856, known as the Arrow Incident, sparked this conflict. The Chinese authorities seized a Hong Kong registered ship called the Arrow, under suspicion of piracy and smuggling. The British however claimed the ship was under their protection, and the incident escalated into war. By now the stakes were higher, and the conflict was not just between the British and the Chinese. Other Western powers including France, the United States and even Russia, 
were drawn into the fray, each eager to secure their own trade advantages and territorial gains. The war was characterized by major battles including the Battle of Canton, the Battle of Taku Forts, and the Battle of Peking, each marked by brutal violence and significant loss of life. The Western powers' superior weaponry and military tactics once again proved decisive. The Chinese forces despite their valiant efforts, were ultimately unable to resist the onslaught. The war ended with the signing of the Treaty of Tientsin in 1858, a series of agreements that further opened China to foreign trade and influence. The aftermath of the Second Opium War was profound. The Treaty of Tientsin not only legalized the opium trade, much to the detriment of the Chinese society, but also allowed foreign diplomats to reside in Beijing, granted freedom of religion, and opened additional ports to foreign trade. More than ever, China was now open, or rather forced open, to the West. However, the Treaty of Tientsin was not just a symbol of China's defeat, it was a catalyst for change. It marked the beginning of a long and painful process of modernization and reform in China. The Chinese were made acutely aware of their technological and military inferiority, and the need to catch up with the Western powers became a pressing concern. The Second Opium War left a lasting impact on China and its relations with the West. It was a turning point in China's history, a painful reminder of the country's past humiliations, and a catalyst for its future transformation. The Opium Wars were not merely about opium. They were about power, sovereignty, and the clash of civilizations. In the aftermath of the Opium Wars, China found itself thrust into a new world order. The Treaty of Nanking, which concluded the first conflict, and the Treaty of Tientsin, which ended the second, marked a significant shift in Chinese international relations. These treaties not merely ended the wars, but also opened up more Chinese ports to foreign trade, establishing what we now know as treaty ports. But what exactly were these treaty ports? They were Chinese cities that were forcibly opened to foreign trade following the Opium Wars. In these areas, foreign powers not only traded freely, but also exercised jurisdiction over their own citizens, under a concept known as extraterritoriality. This essentially meant that if a British citizen committed a crime in Shanghai for instance, he would be tried under British law, not Chinese. This was a direct affront to China's sovereignty and a symbol of the unequal treaties that were imposed on it. The impact of these wars on China's economy was profound. The opening up of Chinese markets to foreign trade led to an influx of foreign goods, destabilizing local industries. At the same time, the government was forced to pay hefty war indemnities, further straining the nation's finances. But perhaps the most significant impact of the Opium Wars was on China's self-perception. For centuries, China had seen itself as the Middle Kingdom, the center of the world. But the Opium Wars shattered this self-image. They marked the beginning of a century of humiliation, a period of foreign intervention and subjugation that still resonates in China's collective memory today. The legacy of the Opium Wars extends far beyond the history books. They continue to shape China's foreign policy and its relationship with the West. They serve as a stark reminder of a time when China was weak and vulnerable, a memory that fuels its desire to regain its past glory and never again be subjected to foreign domination. The Opium Wars, a dark chapter in the annals of history, continue to shape China's perception of the West. In this brief exploration, we've journeyed through a tumultuous period in global history. We began with a trade imbalance with Britain yearning for Chinese tea but China showing little interest in British goods. This imbalance sparked the inception of the opium trade, a desperate and dark solution to Britain's trade deficit. This then led us to the first opium war from 1839 to 1842, a conflict marked by Britain's naval superiority and China's subsequent defeat. The Treaty of Nanking was the result, opening China's ports to foreign trade and ceding Hong Kong to the British. The Second Opium War, fought from 1856 to 1860, further exposed the weakening Qing dynasty. The war ended with the Treaty of Tientsin, which allowed for even more foreign influence and trade in China. The aftermath of these wars left a lasting impact on China and the world. It marked the beginning of the century of humiliation for China, a period of internal strife and foreign intervention. On the global stage it demonstrated the might of European powers and set a precedent for their intervention in Asia. Thank you for joining us on this historical journey. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more engaging content. Until next time keep exploring history.